listen to the great rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes, and that silver-throated tenor whose soft, liquid voice thrills millions each time he croons. Costello, I demand an explanation. You were supposed to meet me here at 7 o'clock. Uh, where have you been? At 7 o'clock? It's 3 o'clock. Well, whatever time been. it was, you missed the date. Well, I just came from the Second National Bank, Abbott. What? I had to go over there and open my vault. But, Costello, you have no money in that bank. I know it. Then why did you open the vault? I wanted to take a bite out of my Hershey bar. <laughs> oh, shut up. You don't have a vault. Is that my vault? Yeah, oh, wait a minute, Costello. I just heard over the radio that the Second National Bank was robbed this afternoon. Wait a minute. Were you there during the robbery? No, but I was there for the tea party. A tea party in the bank? Yeah, while I was standing there, a guy walked in. He says, all right, boys, hand over the sugar. <laughs> hand over the sugar. That's what he said. Costello, wait a minute, quick. What did this man look like? I don't know. He had such a bad cold, he had a handkerchief tied across his nose. <laughs> you, you dummy, that was a mask. He was the crook who robbed the bank. No, he wasn't, Abbott. He was no crook. He was the president of the bank. He offered to sell me the bank for a cow. Sell you the bank for a cow? Yeah, he said, one beef out of you and I'll give you the business. <laughs> Costello, that man was a crook. No, he wasn't. He was a very lovely fella. A very reputable, nice fella. What do you mean? And he had a friend with him who was a dentist. A dentist? Yeah, he offered to fix my teeth. He says, open your mouth and I'll drill you. <laughs> but I didn't have time. <laughs> I didn't want to go marching. Costello, wait a minute. How could you be so stupid? That man happened to be an accomplice. Oh, yeah, he was an accomplice dentist. You should have seen the way he fixed the cashier's toothache. He got him down on the floor, then he shoved a whole bunch of cotton in his mouth. You idiot, that was a gag. A gag? Yes, the cashier had a gag in his mouth. Well, if he did, he never had a chance to tell it. <laughs> I wish I hadn't told it either. Look, <laughs> Costello, can't I get anything through that thick skull of yours? These men were dangerous bank bandits, and they're escaped. They've escaped, remember that, uh, with two sacks full of gold bullion, and they're going to hide it. How are you going to hide bullion in a sack? It's bound to leak out. Oh, look, talk sense, Costello. You've got to go right down to the police station and give a description of those men. Not me, Abbott. I'm not going to... Why should I get mixed up in, those, in such things like that? Costello, I'm surprised at you. Don't you want to aid and abet those men? Do what? Aid and abet those men. Aid and abet. No, I hardly know the guys. Why should I sleep eight in a bed with strangers? <laughs> no, 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 Costello. I mean, you've got to identify the bandits. Could you swear to these men? Oh, yeah, I could swear to them, but they'd only swear right back at me. Extra, extra paper, read all about the National Bank. Hold up. Three-armed bandits escaped with loot. $1,000 reward for their capture. Hey, extra, hey, extra, did, did, did you hear that, Costello? There's a thousand dollars reward for those men, and you and I can collect it. All we have to do is find those three armed bandits. Well, that ought to be a cinch, Abbott. A cinch? Yeah, I mean, after all, you don't see many bandits with three arms. Oh, Costello. <laughs> of course, I got an uncle that's kind of unusual. He's got ten toes. Yeah, you dummy. Everybody has ten toes. Yeah, but my uncle's got nine on one foot and one on the other. All right, look. <laughs> look, Costello, this is no time for foolishness. Now, we've got to get busy and organize a manhunt. Hey, maybe we should call a posse. That's a good idea, because... What'd you say? Uh, call a posse. Call a posse. Call a posse? Yes. Here, posse, posse. No, no, no. Here, posse, will posse. You... Come on, look, posse. Look, 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 will you please be quiet? Before we report to the police station, you got we'll a stop all this. Will you keep quiet a minute? Here, posse. Will you listen to me? Now, listen carefully. Before we report to the police station, we'll stop off and pick up some guns. I'll give you my coat. But I don't want your coat. Uh, you don't want my coat? No, I don't want anybody's coat. I just got over one of my own. My chest still hurts me now. Oh. <coughs> no, no, no. <laughs> look, look. Look, 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 please. I'm not talking... All right, all right, Lou, look. I'm not talking about a colt in the chest. I'm talking about a colt in a holster. I never had a colt in a holster. And I think it's wicked of you, Abbott, to what want to give it to me. What do you mean? You want me to go around sneezing my holster off? No, Custer. <laughs> I'm talking about my colt revolver. You can take my colt, and I'll take my forty-five caliber Mauser. You're going to take your what? My Mauser. Didn't you ever see my Mauser? Yeah, I saw her yesterday with your father. Mauser. <laughs> With my Fowser? With your Fowser, yeah. They were buying Christmas presents for your browser and Souser. Oh. <laughs> Costello, don't you know anything about guns? Didn't you ever have a gat? Well, when I was five years old, I had a little one. But you could hardly call it a gat. Mm, what did you call it? A gitten. A get Oh, Costello. <laughs> Costello, I've heard enough. I know why you're stalling. You're afraid to go looking for those bandits. 
You're nothing but a lily-livered coward. You're a wishy-washy, weak-kneed, spineless jellyfish. Abbott, yeah. smile when you say that. Draw back your lips and smile. Why should I smile? I like to hear the wind whistle through your teeth. <laughs> From the newer crop of hit tunes, Freddie Rich plays Let Me Love You Tonight. Nice work if you can get it, Freddie. Lovely singing star Connie Haynes is all ready to musically tell us, is you is or is you ain't, my baby. Come on, Connie. I got a man who's always late. Anytime we have a date, but I love him. Cause I want him I'm gonna ask him Is you, is, is you ain't my baby The way you're acting lately makes me doubt You still my baby, baby my flame and your heart done gone out a man is a creature that has always been strange just when you're sure of one you'll find he's gone and made a change if you is if you ain't my baby maybe baby found somebody new or is my baby still my baby too a man is a creature who's always been strange. When you're sure of one you'll find, he's gonna make a change. Is you is or is you ain't my baby? Or has my baby found somebody new? Or is my baby still my baby? All right, come on, Costello, get out. We've got to find the police station so that you can give them a description of those bank robbers. 
Ask that, uh, ask that mounted policeman where the station is. Uh, pardon me, officer. We're looking for the police station. We'd like to talk about the Second National Bank robbery. Oh, well, the station's right around the corner. So go right in and they'll give you a big bag of popcorn. Popcorn? Why, certainly. We always feed the stool pigeons. Ha, ha, ha. Say, officer, how long have you been riding that horse? Fourteen years. Did you ever ride a jackass? No. Then get on of yourself. <laughs> Oh, come on, Costello. Hey, here's the police station right around the corner. Oh, I remember this place. My uncle, Artie Stebbins, used to work here as a cashier. A cashier in a police station? Yeah, he used to count the coppers as they came in. Uh, uh, all right, be quiet. Let's go in and report uh, the bank robbery. Hello, Sergeant. We came here, uh, so... Just a moment, just a moment. <laughs> My goodness, what is that? We're grilling a prisoner in there. We got the grill too hot. <laughs> Sergeant, we have some information to give on a bank robbery. Well, you'll find the chief of detectives right down the hall past the cell. Now, come on, Costello. Let me out of here. Uh, I'm innocent, I tell you. Uh, innocent. Uh, innocent. Uh, innocent. Uh, innocent. Uh, hey, I wonder what he's charged with. So do I. <laughs> ah, Costello. Here's the uh, detective bureau. Let's go in. <laughs> well, well, come in, gentlemen, and pull up a habeas corpus. Kitzel, don't tell me you're the chief of detectives. Chief of... Um, uh, could be, yes. But uh, please, boys, don't call me Kitzel, because around here I'm known as the great detective Philo Pants. Philo Pants? Yeah. Are you a good detective? Good. <laughs> Pants never falls down. <laughs> well, come, come, kiddies. What's on your mind? Don't keep pants in suspenders. <laughs> Don't keep pants in suspenders. <laughs> Comical, huh? I'd Comical. like to give you a belt. Uh, quiet, Costello. <laughs> Take it easy. Look, look, Kitzel. Costello was in the Second National Bank this afternoon uh -huh. when it was held up. And he has some valuable clues. Some clues, mm -hmm. huh? Where did you find the clues? Where did I find the clues? In the clues closet, you dope. <laughs> Stella, now don't be silly. Go ahead and tell Kitzel about the bank robbers. Yes. No, I ain't gonna tell him nothing. I'm gonna catch the robbers myself and collect a $1,000 reward. Oh, pish posh, pish posh. He's going to catch the robbers and he's going to go for goodness sake. What do you know about being a detective? What do I know? Yes. What do I know? What do you know? What do I know? Yeah. Uh, I'm a great detective. Oh. You've heard of the thin man? Yes. Well, I'm the fat boy. <laughs> You're the fat boy. <laughs> it's a possibility. Look, Costello, why don't we settle this sensibly? All three of us will look for the bank robbers, and we'll split the reward with Philo Pants. Split the reward? Uh, just a second, gentlemen. Just a second. Pants never split. <laughs> Abbott, I'm a lone wolf. I don't need either one of you guys. I'm dropping you and Pants, too. <laughs> Not your face. Not your face. Just remember, it'll be a cold day when our case is solved without Pants. <laughs> He's right, Costello. Yeah. Philo is an expert at disguises. Am I an expert at disguises? You should have seen me last week. I followed a suspect to the Palladium Dance Hall, and I had to put on a dress and disguise myself like a hostess. Oh, was I cute. <laughs> you know, I even danced with some of the men who bought tickets. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes. Did this happen to be last Saturday night? Saturday night, yes. Yeah. Were you wearing a dress with white buttons? Ha-ha, uh -huh, that was me. Give me back my eight bucks, Gladys. <laughs> Stella, will you please? Ah, uh, pardon me, gentlemen. Hello, Pants on the line. Hello, Pants. Yeah? This is the leader of the bank bandits, Rocky Crumb Cake. Oh, goodness. Now, look, Pants. Yeah. I hate detectives, oh. and I'm going to bump off every detective in this town, mm. starting with the head man. Uh, just a second, I'll let you talk to the boss. Costello, it's for you. <laughs> hello, hello, Costello, the fat boy talking. Listen, fathead. Fat boy, I said. I said fathead. You're right. Go ahead. This is Rocky. This is Rocky Crumb Cake, the bandit. Uh, don't come looking for me or I'll fill you full of lead. Oh, yeah? I'll fill you full of lead. And I'll fill you full of lead. And I'll fill you full of lead. Okay, wise guy. Just say when. I'll meet you in back of Low Hung's laundry in Chinatown. And you come alone. 
Don't bring your mob with you. Don't worry. I'll be there. Alone. You're darn right, because I ain't gonna be there. <laughs> Our singing star now, lovely Connie Haynes, in one of today's favorites. I dream of you more than you dream I do. How can I prove to you this lovely dream? You're and the orchestra revive an old favorite. I've got you under my skin.
and gentlemen, this is a tense moment in our history tonight. The great manhunt is on. Our hero, Detective Costello, the fat boy, has trailed the bank bandit, Rocky Crumb Cake, from one lair to another. He's a three-layer crumb cake. We now find Detective Costello with his friend, Bud Abbott, hot on the trail. It is a big moment as the fat boy stoops to pick up the scent. Let us listen to this fat stoop. <laughs> hey, Abbott, where are we? It's so dark around here, I can't see a thing. Shh, shh, quiet, quiet. We're right in the middle of old Chinatown. How can you tell? I smell punk. I know that. <laughs> well, where are we? Shh, quiet, Costello. Do you realize that we're passing the house of the Seven Howls? Well, who gives a hoot? Uh, will you shut up and follow me? Rocky Crumb Cake is probably hiding in one of these buildings. And I think it's this one. Then let's try another one. Then nah, nonsense. Now, we've got to search every building in this block. Now, let's start with this Chinese theater. Okay, I'll flash my badge on this cute little Chinese girl in the ticket office. Good evening, my little Otis Blossom. How many ticket you want? You all? You all? <laughs> she must come from the south of China. <laughs> How much cost them, Tiki? One yen. Have you got a yen? You all? I got a yen for you all. <laughs> all right. Come on, Costello. Come on. We've got to get... We've got to get crumb cake. Look, you get crumb cake, and I'll stay here with this little cookie. Now, listen. I said come along. Crumb cake may be hiding in the crowd in this theater. Let's go in. Hey, Abbott, listen to that orchestra. <laughs> That's Fleddy Litch and his leechy nuts. Quiet, Costello. There are two Chinese comedians coming out on the stage. Listen. Oh, honorable one lung. Uh, understand that uh, you are organizing honorable baseball team. Yes, honorable Mahjong. Honorable players have funny names. Oh, very interesting. Who is on first? That's like. Oh. What's like? No, honorable Watts on second. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop the show. Stop the show. Oh, what's the matter, honorable fat boy? Why you interrupt honorable Shaw? Because honorable Chinese comedians steal honorable baseball routine that we get honorable money for. All right, all right. Honorable? Costello, let's get out of here. Honorable? Oh, listen, we've got to find crumb cake and get that reward. Hey, we'll go out this exit to the alley. Hey, look across the alley. There's a suspicious-looking building. Don't look at it. Maybe Shh. it won't say nothing. Listen. And the window is open. Come on. I'll boost you in. Hey, watch out for that nail. Okay. Ah. Shh, quiet! You're an undercover man. I think I've just been uncovered. <laughs> ah, good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to our honorable home. Oh, get this character. <laughs> In the back way. It's an old habit. I peddled ice one summer. <laughs> Come this way. The honorable Mandarin is waiting for you. You're killing me, kid. <laughs> Who's waiting for us? The Mandarin. And I can't even play one. Silence. You are in the house of the great Mandarin. Honorable Clang, Clang, Clang. And who are you? I am his daughter, Tickling 6400. <laughs> You must be the belle of Chinatown. Quiet, Costello. Look, uh, Tingling, tell your father that the detectives are here. I will ring for him. Ding, ding, ding. I am the great Mandarin. Clang, clang, clang. Clang, clang, clang with the trolley. A ding, ding, ding with the bell. A ding, ding, ding. All right, Costello. Oh, Costello, will you please? Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Please, keep quiet. Oh, yes, I heard it. All right. Oh, uh, it's our... a nice note. Quiet. Yeah, all right. We'll keep it. Nobody wants it. I think I scared that Chinese woman. You must have, yes. You'll frighten anything. Uh, oh, uh, Honorable Mandarin, uh, we are on the trail of a notorious bank bandit. Uh, we think he may be hiding here. Nonsense. I never heard of Rocky Crumb Cake. Hey, Abbott. Abbott. How did he know his name? That's Rocky Crumb Cake. Come on, Rocky. Put up your hands, Crumb Cake, or I'll crack your frosting. <laughs> Put up your hands. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, fat boy. Hey, that's, that's a mighty pretty gun you have there. Come on, never mind that. Eh, what a nice pearl handle. Hey, do you mind if I look at it? Well, I guess that would be all right. Costello, he's coming toward you. Let him have it. Okay, here you are, Rocky. Uh, no, no, you dummy, no. You told me to let him have it. Not 
the gun. <laughs> now stick them up, you fools. <laughs> the famous detective, Costello. Costello, I'm going to fill you so full of holes, you can button your vest from any angle. Oh, yeah? And do you want to know something, Rocky? Yeah, what? I think you're just the guy that can do it. <laughs> All right, you guys. Turn around and face the wall. This is it. If you got any last requests, make them now. I've, I've got a request to make. Rocky, I'm too young to die. Rocky, before I die, there's only one thing that I would like. Could I have a big bowl of huckleberries and cream? Huckleberries and cream? Yeah. Huckleberries won't be ripe for six months. That's all right. I'll wait. (laughs) Oh, quit stalling with these bums, Rocky. When I count three, give them the works. One, two... (laughs) Stand where you are, everybody! And don't nobody move. And you too, Rocky Crumb Cake. And that dame. <laughs> Get in that closet. I'm locking you both up. Sebastian, what are you doing here with that badge and a gun in your hand? I've got a new job, Louie. I'm the assistant to the great detective, Philo Pants. Pants can't get along without me. Pants can't get along without you. No, he calls me the zipper. The sub- <laughs> Sebastian, Philo Pants should send a kid like you out on a job like this. Why isn't he with you? Don't worry, Uncle Bud. Pants is coming down. How do you know? I've got his belt. Sebastian, I'm surprised at you. Don't you realize that you might have been killed? Why do you always go around butting into things that don't concern you? Why don't you stay home like, like other children do? All you do is worry me and your poor brother to death. What's the matter with you, Sebastian? Oh! Some like to live for the moment Some like to just reminisce But whenever I have an evening to spend Just give me one like this This is a lovely way To spend an evening can't think of anything I'd rather do. This is a lovely way to spend an evening. Can't think of anyone as lovely as Catching a breath of moonlight Humming a favorite tune This is a lovely way To spend an evening I want to save all my nights And spend them with you Good night, folks. Good night, folks. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.